Welcome back everyone. You are watching the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage channel and I am making a, uh, another in a series of videos on my Necky Supernova. Um, the reason I'm doing this and, I, and I've been recently doing some cleaning and you can see some of the residue of that. I'm not done. Um, I wanted to uh, show you guys something that I think I've not shown before which is disassembling and cleaning, or I should say reassembling, the uh, tension um, the tension assembly discs for this sewing machine. Now, uh, I basically uh, wanted to, to showcase this to you guys, and I took, it, took the pieces off already, but I will be putting them back onto the machine, and I will show you uh, basically how I went about this and one of the things you want to keep in mind is that when you are disassembling something for the first time, um, if you're not sure how to do it, one of the things you will want to do is either take photos of it as you disassemble it, or in my case, I simply laid it down in the order in which it, uh, the pieces came off. And so yeah, as I took each one off, here's the, you know, here's the front, I laid it down, did the same thing with this spring because otherwise if you if you put anything back in the wrong order it's not going to to go well it's not going to work right it's designed and engineered to work a specific way so as i go through the process i'm going to be cleaning these today and i'll talk a little bit about this as i go through the video and i wanted you guys to see it because um very often we we're not always aware of you know what we're doing we get excited we start taking things apart it's like oh crap how do I put this back together so uh, one thing you will note here is uh, the space where I took the parts off no surprise there's quite a lot of grunge and dirt there uh, basically I suspect it's old sewing machine oil or maybe even some nicotine although I don't smell anything here so um, what I will basically be doing but what I'll be concentrating on today is the the parts down here before i do though uh, i had some cleaners out in the last video or one of the videos i did on this and i mentioned that i had had you know i was showing you guys different things i've used this uh, hand cleaner before um, the brand is less important for the hand cleaner than making sure that again and i repeat things for a reason uh hopefully for a good reason uh never get this stuff with pumice some of it uh, when you go into the store you'll often see it in a hardware or a car parts store if it says with pumice do not use it on your sewing machine the pumice is great for getting gr grime off your hands however it can uh, really do a number on your paint so you definitely want to get this stuff without pumice so anyway i'm going to take a little bit of it and uh, since i don't think i showed this i've shown it in other videos but not on this specific machine i'm taking my cotton swab and i'm just going to dabble dabble dab some of this hand cleaner on the body around this area and again it's pretty soiled uh, it's very possible that hopefully not but it's possible that this tension assembly has never been disassembled since it was put into the machine in 1957 in pavia italy so obviously it was designed to come apart right now i don't know this for sure who knows somebody could have broken a spring back in the day uh, the spring on this works fine, but it could be the original spring because, uh, again, they, they built them to last. It, it, is, it never ceases to amaze me, and it's just humbling to see just the quality, you know, and especially for something that wasn't always, you know, some of these machines were beautifully taken care of by the original owners, and sometimes they led hard lives. So it's, uh, it's fascinating to me that uh, the way... The way these things just um, once you give them the service they need, they really uh, they really do well. So let's go back down here. I'm going to talk about I've done videos before about how to clean hardware, but I've never done one on the Supernova. So let's take a look. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to be using the hand cleaner on these. I have other products I prefer to use when it comes to um, uh, metal parts. Uh, the, the, these are very likely nickel plated so the key here 
in addition to cleaning, again, the, the, uh, the, the body and this area where all these pieces came off, I'm going to clean them, but I'm going to keep them in this order. And if you do this, make sure no one comes around to play with them or move them around on you, as long as you keep them in this order, you will be fine. Now, one thing to mention, you may notice, hey, there's a lot of discs going on. Normally, you only see two. Uh, and that's for single needle um, stitching. But of course, in 1957, Neki had, as a number of other manufacturers, um, had introduced double needle sewing. So you could put in, it didn't hold actually two separate needles like some of the modern machines. It had an individual needle that would branch out like a wishbone into two if you were so inclined to thread that to, uh, together. I don't have the double needle. That, that could probably be an idea for another video. So it's important, again, take a picture of everything here before you start doing anything with your parts. Um, and again, you can also photograph as you take them off because you want to put them back in the same, not only in the same order, but the same position. So when I, for example, when I'm done cleaning this and I've got everything clean, I go to put it back. I will simply take this up and I will put it onto the tension assembly as it came off, right? And it'll make more sense. Uh, and I'll show you guys how I put the pieces back together once they're clean. So in the meantime, I'm going to take this part and I am going to put it into my little vat of alcohol. And uh, be sure not to splash. This is 99%. I support just rubbing alcohol from a drugstore, but it can do a number on your paint. So I should probably be even a little more gentle. Maybe not have it so close to the body of the machine. And what you'll find is the alcohol is going to soften some of the old grease because alcohol is a solvent. Um, and what I'm doing is basically just using this to soften the grease. In fact, I don't even know how long I necessarily have to leave this in here. So I, I can take my a paper towel and I can just kind of rub it. I expect you know uh, some of the stuff to come off pretty pretty readily. It's not unusual when you're dealing with, yeah, you guys can see. Now this is not polishing. This is um, just getting, like I say, the, the cursory layer of, of grime and old oil. People sometimes will oil these and they actually, um, they put oil here, even though oil does not belong here. I have used oil to polish these before, buff them. But uh, actually, metal polish is your best bet. Uh, I think one of my viewers pointed that out. Thank you to whoever that was. So now that I, and I'm just showing you guys, uh, here's one example. Again, that's the, that's the position that piece was in. Now I'm going to take, this is my Wienall German metal polish. Just I just say German. It was made in Germany. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I've seen polishes called Autosol, and some of you may have others. So uh, you don't have to use the exact polish I'm using here. And by the way, polishes, they have abrasives. In this particular polish, it's a very fine abrasive. And they also have uh, some level or um, amount of solvent. Uh, you know, the, the, the part that keeps the polish liquid and there may be other things I, it's a i'm sure it's proprietary they don't give me the you know the pure recipe here i'm sure there may be some sort of oh it's a list of uh basic stuff but anyway um what you'll notice what i'm doing is i'm putting the polish on but i'm not immediately buffing it uh you can do that if you have light soiling and it might come right off but if you don't hang in there and give it a little time because the chemical action of the polish will, and you guys have seen me do this before. Let me pull this right here and see if I can get up. Um, see if I can get a little close up here for you guys. I'll have to tilt the camera back again. There we go. Now, all I'm going to do is take my cotton swab and I'm just going to buff it like this. You know, it's it's not hard. Now, sometimes if you've gotten corrosion on these parts, um, you will see, and you can see the polish, you see the soiling, it's coming off. That's how you know you're, you're getting something off of there. Now I'm doing, I'm fairly fortunate in what's happening here. This of course is the backside of one of the discs. When the discs come together for the thread, of course, it's going to be on the, the uh, convex 
uh, side of the disc. And let's see, that one's already soiled. You guys will remember I go through a lot of cotton swabs, but that's not a big deal. They're not costly. And now I'm going to come on this side and do some buffing. Once you've done this, you may note it's very possible that you will see uh, areas that look dark and it could be staining. Sometimes the, the, the plating will stain, but you also want to notice and check it to make sure you see that little spot right there. Now, if that, now I'm putting my fingernail or my thumbnail across it and it's smooth. Okay, sometimes this will be pitted and it will just be corrosion. The, the, the nickel has either worn away or been corroded away and you're going to want to uh, maybe take some emery cloth, some very light, um, wet, dry sandpaper, very fine, not coarse. You do not want to scratch this, but you can use, uh, you know, 2000 and 3000 grit if you need to, but I rarely do. Occasionally you can, but this one is, is in good shape. So we'll just take, I'll take my, uh, uh, let's, uh, let's get our view coming back out a bit. I'm going to take my, uh, paper towel here. Or you can use a rag, cotton rag is fine too. Now, what, I've, what have I done? I have removed the, the grime and the, the crud, but I've also polished this. And when you polish metal, <clears throat> obviously the polish cleans it, removes a lot of the grime or the patina corrosion, but it also leaves a nice fine layer of, of uh, the polish itself must have some sort of oils. You can, you can smell them. Uh, and that is going to help preserve this piece. Now that I've cleaned it, let's put it back in the position it was in. This disc is interesting because it appears that it is the same on both sides. And there's a reason for that. Um, I'm going to put it, I'll be installing it back in the same way, but I believe it is. And it has the same facing on both sides because it is going to have to act as a facing for two discs, right? And that is because this machine, again, as I mentioned, was designed for um, double needle stitching. So you could actually put two, two threads, two upper threads uh, in the, um, uh, when you're setting up your needle for, for stitching. Not a lot of people use that feature. It, it was, I'm willing to bet, used to sell uh, these machines, it was like, you know, hey, this is the new and improved, and look at all these brand new features we have. Whether people actually use them is a whole nother matter, uh, and I think that's still true with modern machines. Uh, this is what sewers tell me in any case. Okay, so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to let's just set this here for a minute. I'm going to put this down in the alcohol. Again, you can decide how long you want to leave it in there. The alcohol at 99% is pretty strong. Again, you want to keep it away from your painted finishes. And if you, if I wanted, if you take a photograph of all these parts, you can put them all in at once. I'm doing this uh, just to kind of give you guys, there are different ways and methods you can use to, um, to soften up grime. There's, some people have used um, electrolysis, um, you know, electronic... Uh, jewelry cleaners and many ways to do it. Uh, I just find that this is, you know, it's relatively straightforward and fast unless you have some serious corrosion. And here you can see, I'm just going to, like I say, get off the bulk of it. A lot of it's coming off just with the paper towel. That's good. That's uh, less work for whoever, in this case, me, I'm restoring it. Um, uh, reconditioning this sewing machine. And of course, I will do the same thing with this part that I did with the other uh, I'm going to uh, put some of this polish on here and it's going to um, uh, again I'm not seeing any corrosion or pitting pitting I think was the word I was probably looking for before and couldn't find so there you go um, so basically I'm going to do what I'm doing here with all of these parts right and if you want you can you can leave the polish on them in their position and then take, you know, you can kind of set them all up that way. But anyway, I'll be going through these parts, getting them cleaned. And then when I'm done, we'll come back and I'll basically, uh, we'll make sure the, the facing of the machine behind where this, this uh, wonderfully, you know, beautifully made um, tension assembly device goes, once I've got all that cleaned, we'll reassemble it and I'll show you guys the order that I assemble it in and that hopefully that will help. Anyway, 
be back in a second when it's all nice and shiny and we'll go back to um, we'll get into that next phase of putting her back together okay guys I have gone through the selection of pieces here kept them all in the right order you may notice a couple extra because I had forgotten that inside of this was uh, an additional spring <coughs> and a cap and we'll talk about how these go in uh, when I put it back together you know, I'm looking at this and I'm realizing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different components. <clears throat> and every one of them is high quality. It's just an amazing what went into things uh, once upon a time. Um, one, it's one of the things you may notice with these is Neki was um, sort of ahead of the curve in its day because they would sometimes use, uh, of course, steel that was nickel plated or chrome plated. And in this case, uh, they would also use aluminum and you might think well you know was aluminum cheaper no actually it was more costly to <clears throat> to create these parts in aluminum it was not cheap to do and they did it as a weight saving uh effort i believe so anyway i mentioned uh before that i was going through and every one of these cleaned up and any place i saw a dark spot there is actually no um there's, there's no pitting, right? It's totally smooth. There's nothing to, to, to really be concerned about there. I noticed that um, everything looks fine <coughs> except for this center disc. This is what separates the two different thread lines. And I noticed that all of the staining and, and uh, you know, the, the stuff came off of here except for one place. And there is a fairly uh, fairly deep uh, scratch or gouge in here. Now, these are perfectly balanced. So if you're going to try to eliminate the scratch, you want to do this very cautiously. And what I have, I have uh, a number of grades of sandpaper, but I'm not going to use those because they are, they are simply too coarse. I'm going to start with this. This is 1,000 and then I have a 1500, and then I have a 2000 grit. And as you go up in number, the grit becomes finer. And you might say, well, how do you know which one to start with? It depends on how deep the scratch is. <clears throat> if I didn't, if this was just a very superficial pitting, I might start with 1500. But I'm gonna start with the 1000 grit, and it says wet dry. So uh, it's designed to use, they, a lot of people use it when they're getting ready to paint cars, for example. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to take, let's see, I'm thinking what I'm going to do, instead of using water for this, I may take a little bit of sewing machine oil and see how that does in trying to, to be uh, wet, dry sandpaper. That technique allows you to sand things, but with a, it, the water acts as a lubricant. In this case, I'm using the sewing machine oil. So I'm gonna take, this is the thousand grit, and I normally would, like I said, I would cut it into a smaller piece, but I just want you guys to see. And again, we're not gonna do any heavy grinding here because if we, if we go too far, we're gonna, you know, we don't want to throw off the, uh, the dimensions of this disc. But I'm not worried because I'm not going to be uh, I'm not grinding it with any kind of serious metal grinder to speak of. And you can go around the edge if you want. I don't really see anything else, uh, honestly. And I'm not worried about uh, seriously altering the, uh, the balance of this for the purposes of thread tensioning. But again, I'm, I'm going basically with, you know, even a thousand grit is a, is a much finer sandpaper than you would have, say, if you were sanding wood wood for example where you start with sometimes 220 or even lower than that the really coarse stuff okay so I've gotten uh, I've been able to remove part of the pitting it's not as deep and now I'm going to take this is an older piece this is uh, 1500 notice it says waterproof there uh, but again I'm gonna <clears throat> I'll put a drop of sewing machine oil sewing machine oil has to be one of the most flexible things ever Okay, so I'm going to take the 1500, I'm going to do the same thing. 
and it's not going to be as aggressive, right? It's going to take more uh, work. And again, I can go around the entire disk if you're worried about maybe throwing off the balance. We're not, we're not removing a tremendous amount of metal here. If we were, I, I would be more concerned. So, but right now, I think, I think we're going to be fine. Um, now, let's see what we've got. Okay, we're getting even, even better, more, more smooth. And might take the end of this. And a lot of this you have to do by feel, guys. You can't always sort of stare at it and say, oh, well, it's, you know, it must be fine now. Uh, and don't go by uh, the color alone because you can have a stain in the finish um, even when it's smooth. And you don't want to keep grinding until you remove the stain. That's not your mission here. It's just to get everything smooth so that when that thread comes through, it doesn't hang up. The last thing you need is thread that's getting caught uh, on a on a burr or or a, or, a, or a cut, if you will, in the in the steel. Because if you do, it's going to mess up your tension, and it's not it's not really common to have damage to such things. Uh, it's, it's kind of an odd. Um, I, I rarely have this come up as an issue, and I'm not really sure why this one has that little spot but we're gonna, we're gonna finish up here and this is uh, this is 2000 grit so really really low abrasion but enough again you always start with whatever you're gonna start with you go coarser to finer if that makes sense you can see something's coming off here but not a not anything uh, that would give me concern so now I come across with my fingernail, I feel just a tiny little indentation. Maybe we'll go back to go back to the 1500 a bit. And again, it would take serious grinding with one of those uh, drill grinding uh, tools to really cause major, major metal loss here. And once more with the 2000, and I think we're going to be, I think we're going to be okay. And I'm, and I'm actually considering myself quite fortunate that that's, this is all I had. A lot of times, um, the any damage to these parts is often just pure corrosion. Everything I pulled off here was basically old sewing oil. Someone squirted oil in this thing, but uh, it may seem a little silly to do. However, the old oil could have in a maybe not on purpose, but actually help preserve these because that oil helps prevent corrosion from getting worse. But ideally, you don't want oil on these at all because it, it messes with your thread. What you want is metal polish. So now that we've gotten things nice and smooth here, I'm going to come back with a little bit of this, uh, this Weenol polish just to clean things up here. And then uh, we will we'll actually start putting everything back together. You can see the, like I say, the corrosion. It's, you know, given how long this thing has sat, it's, it's really surprising it's not in worse shape. But again, this was, at least at some part of its life, I don't know if it was, I think it might have been in a table. The person that sold it to me, the, the table had basically uh, been ruined and I don't know how, you know, I don't know all that story. Um, some of these, of course, uh, the standard for any sewing machine during this period, including Neckies, was to buy it in a case, in you know something that looks like an old school suitcase, and that's what you got. If you wanted a table, you had to pay extra, and we've talked about that in some of the videos. It was often a lot extra. Uh, beautiful tables, beautifully made, but um, there's a reason why people used to have to to uh, uh, make payments on their sewing machines and tables. And on this side, I just noticed there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a nick here, I think. So I'll go ahead and do give that the same treatment with the sandpaper. And again, you know, while we've got it apart here, this is the time to do it. You don't, this is not, by the way, guys, this is not part of what you might call regular maintenance. This is a restoration or conservation technique for a vintage sewing machine. 
Uh, I, I, I suspect this thing has never, this, this assembly has never been taken apart since 1957. So again, don't worry that you, oh gosh, you know, I'm going to have to do this on a regular basis. No, no, don't. Do not get that impression. I don't want to leave you with that impression. You're like, who, who wants a vintage sewing machine with all that um, stuff? But you're not really going to have to. Um, it's not going to be an issue, okay? And if you're bringing an old machine back, yes, this is very important to do, um, or to pay someone to do. And as I've mentioned to you guys before, when you're when you're trying to decide what you're going to sell a sewing machine for, or finish up with the 2000 grid here or what you're going to pay for a sewing machine remember and I've told you all before in those purchasing series or what to look for you really want to ask what condition is the machine in because that determines how much it's going to cost you in either dollars or in your own time if you were the one to do it you're going to um, you're going to have to decide okay well you know, am I going to uh, do the work? Because your time, everyone's time, yours, mine, everyone's is valuable. And although people often say to me, is this machine collectible? Is it rare? Is it, what is it worth? Most vintage sewing machines, and, and there are exceptions, and I've, I've shown you guys some of those before, most vintage sewing machines were not rare. At least the ones that I focus on for restoration. There are many, uh, machines from the very earliest days of sewing machines that uh, when they were first invented and they can be quite rare uh, but those are not typically the, the machines I work on. The machines I work on I need to be able to get parts for and I need to be able to um, uh, offer them to people who really want to, 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 to practically use them to sew with. Okay so now we've gotten all of these polished and I had polished this one originally, but I went back and I did a little buffing with the sand. And again, we haven't we haven't damaged the disc here. It's going to be fine. It's not going to hurt anything. In fact, it's going to help prevent issues with thread thread tearing and thread problems. Machines can get very fussy if you are not uh, paying close attention to the thread path and what it needs. Okay, so here we go. Everything should be ready. And so uh, thanks for watching, guys. This is again the just I have disassembled and cleaned the Neki Supernova tension assembly and now you can see I went in here and I got this this goop off and I actually ended up using um, some of the I tried the the hand cleaner didn't work good for this thing sometimes hand cleaner is great uh, but I actually took a little bit of this polish and was able to pull a good bit of the staining off and at least uh, she's clean and now I will um, Get ready to make the next video in which you guys will see me put it all together. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next shot.